units of rate constant. See how we will be writing the unit of K. See, uh, usually what's the formula? R is equal to K, R is equal to K, R is equal to K into active mass of concentration of reactants. That's the formula. That's the general formula. Rate of actually what the formula is according to law of mass action, the rate of reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of reactants. Concentration of reactants. See here, if you'll remove this directly proportional sign, then what will be the formula? R is equal to K into active mass of concentration of reactants. This will be the formula. Now see, we'll take here different order reactions. There's a general formula. If it is zero order reaction, if it is zero order reaction, if it is zero order reaction, then R is equal to, if it is zero order reaction, then R is equal to K into active mass of active mass of concentration of reactants to the power zero to the power zero why because it is zero order reaction so first of all we will be talking about zero order reactions now see what's the meaning of uh, concentration uh, of reactants to the power zero it means one if any number is having c if 10 to the power zero what does it means it means one if 100 to the power zero what does it means one so any number having zero power, what does it mean? It means it is one. So one into K will be K. So R is equal to K. So what will be the unit? What your topic is units of rate constant. So this K rate constant, its unit will be R. What R is? R is rate of reaction. Rate of reaction means number of moles of reactants, number of moles of reactants, number of moles of reactants upon liter per second. This is molar concentration and this is time. So molar concentration upon time, there's a unit of rate of reactions. So this will be the unit of K. So moles per liter per second, that's the formula. Mole per liter per second, that's a unit for K in case of zero order reaction. So this was for zero order reaction. Now see first order reaction. In first order here, it will be instead of zero, it will be one. So R is equal to K into concentration of reactants to the power, reactants to the power one. See what the unit of this R is mole, mole per liter per second is equal to K. And this is concentration. Concentration means mole per liter this mole per liter and this mole per liter will be canceled out and the unit of K will be second inverse. This is what it is written here. Second inverse means time inverse. Second inverse means time inverse, means year inverse, hour inverse, minute inverse. So time inverse, there's a unit of K for first order reaction. So this is what the point there in the previous uh, topic was on the basis of this uh, on the basis of this unit you will predict the order of that reaction now this was first order reaction now second order reaction c second order reaction r is equal to r is equal to k into active mass of reactants to the concentration reactants to the concentration 2 because it is second order reaction now because it is second order reaction so rate of reaction means mole per liter per second is equal to K. And what's the concentration of reactants unit? That is mole per liter. And since it is second order reaction, so to the power two. See this to the power one, and this will be canceled. What will be the unit of K? K will be equal to one upon second into mole per liter. So now if you'll write it, this liter will be written upside and second inverse mole 
inverse. This is the unit of this is the unit of second order mole inverse liter and second inverse. This will be the unit of second order reaction. So like this, we'll be calculating the unit of K for third order reaction and then for nth order. Nth order means this will be N and here it will be one. So N minus one. Or you can say you'll change the side, then that will become, then that will become. Then in case of nth order, in case of nth order, unit of K will be mole into liter to the power one minus s n second inverse. So everything is written here. So from this on, you will get this all. Now see, this is what I was telling you. See here what they have written. They are asking you to identify. They are asking you to recognize the order of the reaction. See here time inverse. So this is first order. And what about this one? Liter mole inverse second inverse second inverse liter mole inverse second inverse. That is second order reaction. So this reaction is second order reaction. So from the unit of this K, you can come to know, you can predict the order of any chemical reaction. So in this way, you will be managing this all such questions. So from unit only, in many cases, for example, they'll be writing 100 gram. They'll be writing 100 gram. They have not written that what this 100 gram is. But from gram, you can easily predict now its mass. So they need not to specify you that whether it is force, whether it is mass, whether it is density or what it is. So from the unit only, from the unit only, you will predict with that whether it is density or mass or volume or what else. So this is what the point is. This is what the topic here is. Now see, uh, this I was talking about the, the same one which we have done there in our last class that units of rate constant. So that's here. Now see what next is what next to this units of rate constant is. Molecularity of a reaction. See here, I'll tell you this uh, molecularity. See two things are there. This is a, a reactant. This is reactant A and this is reactant B. So between this A and B, two things are there. As in the beginning of this chapter, I told you from suppose last 90 days we are studying. In 90 days, we have finished suppose 150 pages. So how many pages one day in one day you have finished? That is 150 divided by 90. So this will be the number of pages per day number of pages per day. Now see, this is one method. Second method, on 3rd of April, you have started classes. So on 3rd of April, you have finished two pages. On 4th of April, you have finished 1.5 pages. On 5th of April, you have finished nine pages. And on 6th of April, you have done zero pages. So these all will combine together. You will take the total number of pages, that is 150. And you will take the number of days to cover those that much number of pages. So this will be the average rate of the reaction. This will be the average rate of reaction. And this will be the exact rate of reaction. So this many, many exact rates, many instantaneous rates will combine together. Many instantaneous rate or average rates will combine together to form this average rate. So average rate is nothing. It is it is. It is cumulative exact or instantaneous rates of reactions. It is sum of various exact or instantaneous of reactions, rea reactions that is called average rate. Though, so nothing different. Both are one and the same thing. This will be there at any exact point of time. This is there at any exact point of time. And this is there there in a long interval of time. So average rate means the amount of reactant changing into product in a given interval of time. And this exact rate is the amount of reactant changing in at any specific point of time. So that's the difference. Exact rate means the amount of work done at any specific point of time. And average rate means the amount of work done at any given interval of time.
so interval of time means always big and point of time means that's the smallest one you can't reduce time any more further fine so you can't take lesser than this point of time they are in any reaction now see this is what your whole chapter is in this chapter you will be you will be studying only this between a and b in 5 days suppose in 5 days how many times these two reactants will be colliding in 5 days duration these reactants a and b how many collisions are there between them that will be the total number of collisions in a given interval of time so that is average rate of reaction how many number of collisions are there in a given interval of time that is average rate of the reaction and at any specific point of time at any specific point of time how many collisions will be there between these two reactants that will be the exact rate of reaction are you getting my point in any given interval of time how many collisions are there between reactant molecules and at any specific point of time how many collisions between reactants are there that will be the exact rate of reaction that's the point see you are studying in a class of 50 students one more point to understand this uh, average and exact rate this is what your complete chapter is suppose in a class of 50 students in a class of 50 students so they will be asking you how many students are sitting there so you'll say 50 students are sitting there this is one thing now they will be asking you second question how many of them are studying sitting 50 but how many of them are studying that's a different thing it can be 50 or it can be zero also or it can be 40 30 or any number but can never be more than 50 can never be less than zero so th these two things are there in a class of 50 students how many students are sitting how many students are sitting 50 students are sitting in a class of 50 how many are students are sitting 50 students are sitting so average rate will be 50 average rate will be 50 and out of those 50 students how many of them are actually sitting there there in the classroom means how many of them are actively taking part in the class how many of them are understanding the concept how many of them are seriously studying that will be the exact rate of the reactions so these are the two things exact of rate of reaction can be 50 can be 39 can be 49 can be 10 can be 0 can be fractional also this can be fractional also fractional means two students are studying properly out of 50 and one student sometimes is studying and sometimes it is not listening so means you can say two and half two and half students are studying means two students are studying completely and one student is partially studying so this uh, exact can be partial to can be fractional to but this average you can't say that 2.5 students are sitting or 40.5 students are sitting either it will be 40 or it will be 41 or like this will always be a whole number can never be a fractional but this exact can be a fractional one this is very very important very interesting very easy one if you understand what examples i have given you if you will be listening all these examples seriously then it will be very easy for you to explain exact rate of reaction or is uh, average rate of reaction so what your topic is your topic is average rate of reaction and exact rate of reaction see this from where you will come to know about the average rate of reaction you will come to know this average rate of reaction if r is equal to how you calculate it r is equal to del x upon del t and what this will be this will be r is equal to dx upon dt now see here what's the difference this is what the point is what the difference between this del t and dt this dt is such a small interval of time if you'll further reduce the time this change in concentration of reactants will become zero means there will not be any change in the concentration of the reactant and this del t is a very big interval of time is a very big interval of time suppose this is 10 days and this is 10 am 15 minutes 10.15 am or 10:15 in morning so at any specific point of time that is dt that is the shortest interval of time 
means if further can't reduce the time if you'll be further reducing this dx will become zero such a small interval of time that is dt that's the point this this rate of reaction we have written this rate of reaction is governed by law of mass action this rate of reaction is governed by law of mass action and what this rate of reaction is this rate of reaction is governed by rate law expression this is governed by rate law expression this is the total number of collisions this is the total number of collisions in a given interval of time and this is the total number of collisions at any specific point of time at any specific point of time how many reactants will be colliding that many will be the deciding that many number of molecules will be deciding the exact rate of reaction so see if at any specific point of time only one reactant is there then that that means the order of that reaction this will tell you about the order of reaction this will tell you about the order of reaction this exact rate will tell you about the order of the reaction and this average rate of reaction will tell you about the molecularity of the reaction so molecularity means how many students are sitting there in your classroom and order of reaction means how many of them are studying so that order of reaction can be fractional that can be that can be zero but molecularity can never be zero molecularity can never be fractional see if any reaction is having molecularity one then its order of sorry then it will be known as unimolecular reaction then it's called unimolecular reaction all decomposition reactions all decomposition reactions dissociation reactions are decomposition reactions are first order reactions see decomposition of ammonium nitrite then ammonium nitrite that is nh4 no2 will change into n2 and h2o this is unimolecular reaction means the molecularity of this reaction will be one in case of bimolecular reactions two reactant molecules will be there that is dissociation of hydrogen iodide that is biomolecular so you should remember which reaction is unimolecular which reaction is bimolecular which reaction is trimolecular or polymolecular so you should remember this all because questions they will be asking you like this only trimolecular or termolecular reactions here number of reactant molecules are 2 plus 1 3 so molecularity will be 3 so in this way we can calculate the molecularity of any reaction very easily <clears throat> now see the next point this was also done there there in our previous class but still i am repeating the same see here in this reaction this is one molecule this is six and this is three so three plus six nine plus one ten so molecularity of this reaction overall reaction is ten but its order of reaction is two so how we can say that order of reaction is two if you if you know the mechanism of this reaction if you know the mechanism of this reaction, if you know the sequence of different steps involved in this reaction, and which step will be the slowest step, which step will be the slowest step, and in that slowest step, number of reactant molecules are only two. So that's why its order of reaction will be two. So, so molecularity, you can by looking just this reaction, you can state the answer. But what about the order of reaction? Order of reaction is not so easy. If you know the mechanism of reaction, if you know the order of any reaction, then only you can write it. And if you don't know the order, then it won't be possible for you to give the answer. So that is why you should cover examples as much as possible so that tomorrow in exam, nothing will be there out of your approach. You can give the answer for all questions. You can give answer to all such questions. So that's why, that's why you should know the order of uh, different reactions now see what the next is see what next is here they have given decomposition of h2o2 what is the meaning of decomposition of h2o2 it's written here this h2o2 in presence of iodide ion in presence of iodide catalyst this h2o2 changes to h2o plus io minus this is slow step, this is first step, this is rate determining step. What RDS is? Rate determining step. 
see in a relay race what it was uh, assumed that the person that the athlete who will be running the fastest will be deciding that whether you will be getting the silver medal gold medal or whether you will be getting any medal or not this is old concept what modern concept is it is not the athlete who runs fastest will decide the medal it is the athlete which is running slowest that fellow will decide whether you will be getting medal or not if that fellow will not be rest three will be running very fast and the fourth one won't be running fast then how you will be getting the medal fine so the step which is slowest step that will always be deciding the order of reaction so slowest step that is rate determining the step that step will let you know see here in that slowest step how many reactants are there one plus two so the order of reaction order of reaction will be two so the order of reaction will be two order of this reaction will be two why because it is the slowest step fine now see second step in that second step h2o2 reacts with this io minus to form h2o plus i minus plus o2 that's a fast step so this step will never decide the order of reaction if we'll add both these reactions if we'll add if we'll add both these reactions see this is this is io minus this is also io minus this is i minus this is also i minus now see twice h2o2 twice h2o2 add these both steps twice h2o2 rest is nothing will be giving you twice h2o will be giving you twice h2o plus o2 so this is overall balanced chemical equation and from this overall balanced chemical equation you can easily predict the molecularity of the reaction so molecularity of the reaction will be 2 why because here the number of reactant molecules is 2 now see molecularity means molecularity means molecularity means the average rate of reaction so average rate of reaction is e is that is equal to k into active mass of h2o2 to the power 2 average rate you will be writing like this and now see the second thing this is overall balanced chemical equation from there you will be calculating average rate of reaction from there you will get an idea about the molecularity now the second thing second thing this is what your topic is now the second thing now the second thing now see second point related to this now second point related to this is see which step this is one step this is second step which step is slowest this is the slowest so exact rate of reaction exact rate of reaction is equal to k into after mass of h2o2 into after mass of i minus see here how many reactant molecules are there two reactant molecules are there so order of reaction will be two order of reaction is also two and molecularity is also so two see how you have written here average rate of reaction and how you have written exact rate of reaction this is what your entire chapter is so many different examples we will be talking here and then we will be writing all those examples like this every example will be having answers like this one one will be average second will be exact one will be molecularity second will be order of reaction so coincidentally here order of reaction and molecularity both are same that is true but it is not a simple reaction it's a complex reaction how you can say it's a complex reaction because see this is one step this is second step more than one steps are involved now so all those reactions in which more than one steps are involved are called complex reactions and if there is only one step then all such reactions will be known as elementary reactions or simple reactions elementary reactions or simple reactions means made of only means only takes place in one step and what's the meaning of complex reaction or complicated reactions means it is it is having two or more than two steps so 
both the this is this is one elementary step this is another elementary step these two elementary or uh, 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 these simple steps combines together and you will get the complex reaction so this is one and this is second elementary reaction so two or more than two elementary reactions or simple reactions will combine together to form complex reactions or complicated reactions so see now now uh, they may ask you here see i minus is there i o minus is also there but why you have not mentioned that they may ask you that here i minus is there and i o minus is also there then in overall balanced equ chemical equation why you have not mentioned that because these were intermediate products because these were what intermediate products you will always be writing only initial chemicals that is reactants and you will be writing the final products so initial reactants and final products only will be mentioned will be mentioned here so intermediate compounds will never be mentioned if you see if you if with reference to h2o2 only if we'll talk about the order of reaction with respect to h2o2 then it will be one how many h2o2 are there only one so with reference to h2o2 uh, order of reaction will be one and with reference to with respect to i minus in that case also order of reaction will be one why because only one molecule of h2o2 is there why because only one iodide ion is there so if we'll take this complete reaction this complete step slow step so in slow step total reactant molecules are two so overall second step complete second step order of reaction will be two and with respect to h2o2 it is one and with respect to i minus it is one so one plus one will be two so in this way you will be calculating order of reaction and molecularity in this way you will be calculating average rate of reaction and exact rate of reactions now see one more example they have given so now we'll be talking about this example to see here reaction of roh plus hcl this h will combine with oh to form h2o and what rest will be rcl this reaction takes place in presence of anhydrous zinc chloride this reaction takes place in anhydrous zinc chloride now see here this oh minus is substituted here oh minus is substituted by cl minus so oh minus is substituted by cl minus so this is nucleo this oh negative charge is nucleophile the cl minus is also nucleophile so this is nucleophilic substitution reaction what this reaction is this reaction is is an example of nucleophilic substitution reaction nucleophilic substitution reaction so this was overall balanced chemical equation this was overall balanced chemical equation now see first of all what will happen this roh o of this roh will be having two lone pairs will combine with h plus this h plus combines with this o to form roh2 plus that is a fast step that is a fast step in next step what will happen that's reversible reaction generally reversible reactions are slow one but here it is an exceptional this is reversible reaction equilibrium reaction but is fast one so generally reversible reaction c you are staying there in the you are uh, your class is there there on the fourth floor and if you'll keep on moving ground from ground floor to fourth floor again and again and again you will feel tired now and your speed will automatically get reduced means slow so this is what uh, reversible re this is what i am trying to tell you generally reversible reactions which which means keep on changing reactants to products products to reacts so will lose energy and will be the slow one but here it is an exceptional and it is reversible reaction but is fast one now see in second step that is also reversible and what will happen this roh2 plus will be losing h2o molecule and uh, will be producing r plus that's a slow step now see 
Now, now see here, that's a point. Average rate of reaction will be equal to the active mass of concentration of ROH and concentration of HCl. So molecularity will be molecularity will be two. Now see the exact rate of reaction. Now see the exact rate of reaction is equal to K. Exact rate of reaction is equal to K. Exact rate of reaction is equal to K. See, this is the slow step now. So how many reactants are there? R, O, H2 plus. How many reactants are there? Here it was two. So molecularity was two. And here it is only one. So order of reaction will be one. So in this way, you will be calculating order of reaction and the molecularity of the reaction. Molecularity of the slowest step. This is the slowest step now. Molecularity of slowest step. Molecularity of slowest step. That is RDS. Rate determining step is called order of reaction. What order of reaction is? Order of reaction is nothing but the molecularity of the slowest step. Order of reaction is nothing but the molecularity of the slowest step. Then what molecularity is? Molecularity is the total number of reactant molecules in overall balanced chemical equation. Now see, still, still one more step will be there. Third and final step will be there. This R plus, this R plus combines with Cl minus of H is added, but Cl minus is still there now. So that R plus combines with Cl minus to form RCl, that's fast step. So if we'll, if we'll add all these reactions, is this all over now? I'll, I, I'll add all this, uh, these three steps so that I can show you how you will be getting ROH plus HCl. Now see, this is ROH2 plus, this is also ROH2 plus, this is R plus, this is R plus. Fine, so what you will get? ROH plus HCl, ROH plus HCl, ROH plus HCl. What we get? RCl plus H2, it's the same one. So this is what the meaning of uh, overall balanced chemical equation and different steps involved in any chemical reaction. In this way, you will be calculating average rate of reaction and exact rate of reaction. In this way, you will be calculating molecularity and order of reaction. Molecularity, we can calculate from here only. But for order of reaction, you should know this. Molecularity can be calculated from here. Average rate of reaction can be calculated from here. But without knowing this, you can't calculate order of reaction or exact rate of reaction. You can't calculate order of reaction or the exact. That's why in your NCRT, whatever number of mechanism of reactions I have written, that much it is not there. So just please go through my notes only. From there, you will get almost all examples what they asked you previously there in ITJWE or neat exams. Fine, so from that point of view, my notes will be quite uh, uh, sufficient for you to handle all such examples. Whatever it is there, they are in different reference books. Every example I have taken. So in NCRT, all these mechanisms you won't be uh, getting, but uh, all these things will be used there. Fine, what questions they'll be tomorrow asking there in your NEET or JWE, for all such questions, you won't be getting answers there, there in your NCRT. But from my notes, I tried my level best to uh, discuss each and everything, whatever it is there, there in different books. But let's see whether a uh, question tomorrow uh, in your JWE or NEET exams will be coming from my notes or not. But in NCRT, all such things are not there. So this is what, uh, uh, since uh, in the slowest step, as I have already told you, only one reactant molecule is there and it is nucleophilic substitution reaction. So how you'll be writing nucleophilic substitution reaction, you'll be showing it like this. And order of reaction is one. So it will be SN1 reaction. What it will be, it will be SN1 reaction. It can be SN2 also. In, in, in uh, hello alkanes, hello arenes, uh, Lakshita, we have already done now in uh, hello alkanes, hello arenes, SN1 or SN2. So what was the meaning of SN? SN means nucleophilic substitution reaction. And what was the meaning of this two or one? It was order of reaction. So from where you will come to know about the order of reaction? From the slowest step. 
and how you will come to know about the slowest step that you will come to know from mechanism only if you don't know the mechanism then it won't be possible for you to come to know about the order of the reaction then you won't be able to decide whether it will be sn1 reaction or sn2 reaction so this is what it is written here it follows this reaction follows sn1 mechanism because its molecularity because its molecularity of the slowest step as i have written there in the previous uh, slide now molecularity of the slowest step is order of reaction molecularity of the slowest step molecularity of the slowest step will be order of reaction and molecularity of the overall balanced chemical equation will be the molecularity so that's the point now see there was a question when i was writing uh, neat na in that exam there was a question that question in that question they gave you velocity constant of forward reaction and velocity constant of backward reaction what they gave in that question velocity constant for forward reaction and velocity constant for backward reaction and the question was a statement was very very lengthy five six lines were there in that statement so everybody was thinking that it's a since question is so big so obviously solution will also be big enough but it was not so just what you need to do you have to put a velocity constant for forward reaction there in numerator part and the velocity constant of the backward reaction there in the denominator part and just to divide that solve you will get the answer so questions usually what it is kc is equal to backward upon forward no it won't be backward upon it won't be backward upon forward it will be forward upon backward so just take care of this questions again that's why i have written this formula otherwise it's no it's of no use now see now we'll focus totally on this what up till now we have done we have done molecularity and order of reaction so now we'll focus on that only molecularity and order of reaction so just just it's a simple sort of thing just uh, it's a simply revision sort of thing nothing new just up till now what you have done that only we'll be doing here what's the meaning of molecularity c molecularity means the total number of effective collisions c if reactants are colliding with each other then every time they won't be getting converted into products if reactants are having sufficient energy if reactants are colliding with each other and are having sufficient energy then only they will get converted into product reactants with sufficient energy will only get converted into products and if reactants are not having sufficient energy then they will not get converted into products that collision won't be effective collision reactants are colliding with each other with sufficient energy and with proper orientation then only they will be getting converted into products and such collisions in which reactants are getting converted into products are called effective collisions so the total number of effective collisions between reactant molecules in a given interval of time that is molecularity and the total number of effective collisions between reactant molecules at a given point of time that is order of reaction this molecularity is governed by law of mass action and uh, order of reaction is governed by rate law expression this molecularity in this molecularity the rate of the reaction will be average that is del x upon del t and in order of reaction that rate of the reaction will be exact or instantaneous that will be dx upon dt this molecularity is concerned to mechanism and this order of reaction is concerned to kinetics of the reaction this molecularity is always integral value can never be fractional can never be negative can never be zero can will always be definite will always be finite or constant and it is imaginary and will always be less than 3 for elementary reactions because more than 3 collisions simultaneously will never be possible but molecularity for complex reactions may be up to 15 but for simple reactions elementary reactions or single step reaction more than three collisions can't be possible one reactant will be colliding with this one so both are perpendicular then third will be perp perpendicular to this one and third will be perpendicular to this one 
so every collision will be perpendicular to each other so maximum three dimensions three directions are there so more than three collisions simultaneously can never be possible total number of collisions can be up to 15 only but simultaneous number of collisions means at any given point of time how many reactants can collide with each other maximally that is three so this is what it is written here and uh, the order of reaction can vary depends upon conditions it can be fractional, it can be zero, it can be minus, so anything can be possible. Now see, we'll discuss some more points related to this molecularity and order of reaction. Reactions of higher molecularity is rare since the chance of coming into contact and colliding simultaneously decreases as the number of molecules involved in collision increases. See this reaction. What you have sa said here, what you have stated here, order of reaction depends upon conditions. So to support this point, I have given this example. This is cyclopropane and this cyclopropane get converted into propane. If high pressure is there, then this reaction will be first order. But if pressure is low, then the same reaction will be second order. So order of reaction depends upon the conditions. This is what the meaning is. One reaction can have more than one type of orders. This is what the meaning of can vary. Now see, this molecularity is applicable to elementary reactions only. For complex reactions, it has no meaning. Molecularity of the slowest step is same as the order of the overall reaction. So many times I have repeated this statement. This order of reaction is applicable to elementary reactions as well as complex reactions both. Now see what next point is. Total number of reactant molecules present in any reaction. Most of the reactions are biomolecular while trimolecular reactions are very rare. That is called molecularity. And the total number of reactant molecules which really affect the rate of reaction present, all the molecules which are present there, there in any chemical reaction won't be affecting the rate of the reaction. See in a class of 50, in a class of 50, only three students are sincere. So those three students will be deciding the level of the class. If they will be there, there in the classroom, then the level of the class will be good. But if they won't be there, teacher won't be taking interest to teach you. So this is what the meaning of order of reaction and molecularity is. Molecularity will be 50, but order of reaction will be 3 only. So the total number of reactant molecules which really affect the rate of reaction, that will be the order of reaction. See, they have given this one example, A plus 2B will be giving you product. See, according to average rate of reaction molecularity see according to average rate of reaction according to average rate of reaction according to average rate of reaction molecularity of this reaction will be three. Why? Because three reactant molecules are there. So rate of this reaction will be D, del H upon del T is equal to K into A to the power one into B to the power two. So one plus two will be three. So the order, of, so, sorry. So the molecularity of the reaction will be three. And what about the order of reaction with reference to A? it is one with reference to A, sorry, with reference to A, that is X that we don't know in a slowest step, how many 